Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and I'm here with Dr. Gerald Dyson, a Carter County native, currently a history teacher at Kentucky Christian University in Grayson, in Grayson, Kentucky. And he grew up in Olive Hill, and he's the co-founder of the Carter County Historical Society. Dr. Dyson, welcome to the Kentucky History Podcast. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Um, as, uh, as we had talked about previously, I just want to say... Uh, Really appreciate what you're doing uh, with this podcast. I think it's a great way for people to uh, to get tuned into local Kentucky history in uh, mm-hmm. in, in ways that'd be very difficult without uh, you know the kind of uh, in-depth local knowledge uh, that uh, that you and your guests have. So just want to say really appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you. It's 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 a lot of fun, or at least it's fun for me. I know there's some people out there who might not <laughs> might find history boring. But if they're if they're out there, they're probably not listening to this podcast anyway. Yeah, I think we don't have to worry about those people <laughs> yeah. tuning in. Yeah. yeah, but you know, it, it is. It's a lot, there's a lot of good history out there. Trying to find those stories, and that's really to me what history is 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 stories. You know, storytelling. And you know, there's a lot of corners in Kentucky that have great stories to be told. And uh, absolutely, we're trying to find all those people and get those stories out there and be accessible, like you said. Yeah. Uh, you know, not everybody has a cool copy of the Kentucky Encyclopedia, you know. Indeed. <laughs> so anyway, you, you grew up and majority of your life you've been in Carter County. But t- just tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, your, your Kentucky life, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, so um, I was actually, so I was uh, born in uh, Mount Sterling. Um, and uh, that was, was living in, uh, my parents were living in Wolf County at the time, um, and um, lived in rural Wolf County um, near kind of uh, Campton, Lee City, um, in that in that area, uh, basically back up in a holler, uh, <laughs> which is why we had to go all the way to um, uh, to Mount Sterling uh, for uh, any place that had, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, was uh, set up for <laughs> delivering babies. <laughs> um, and then uh, my parents moved to uh, Olive Hill when I was uh, just two and um so from the time i was two until i was 20 i think i was 20 um lived in in carter county um and then um i uh, i moved to england uh did a master's degree in england uh did a master's in medieval history com- very cool. different from kentucky history. <laughs> yeah, that sounds um, really cool though <laughs> that's my my research specialization is medieval um so i specifically do um medieval church history. Um, I, I haven't written any books on Kentucky history, but I uh, wrote a book about medieval um, priests. Wow. In England. Um, that was published a couple of years ago. It's, it's actually, it's coming out in paperback here in a few months. Um, but anyway, uh, so I, uh, I did that. I came back to the U.S. for a couple of years. Um, and then in 2013, went back to the U.K. Um, to work on my Ph.D., graduated in 2016. Um, and then just a short time after that, I went back to, uh, came back to the U.S., got hired at uh, Kentucky Christian University, which is almost also my alma mater. Cool. Um, and so, so that worked out nicely. And I've been there for, uh, for about five years now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do have a lot of questions about the England trip in the UK, <laughs> uh, but I will keep, keep it, keep it brief. Where, where at in England was it exactly? Or did you study? So my yeah, both my masters and my doctorate are from the University of York, uh, okay. which is in northeastern England. As I like to tell people, not New York, but Old York. <laughs> uh, the uh, it's it's uh, in the northeast. Uh, it's about it's about two hours by train from London, about mm-hmm. two hours by train from Edinburgh, um, and on the on kind of uh, yeah east coast. Uh, not it's not quite on the coast, about twenty miles from the coast. It was a great place to live. My wife and I really. Um, enjoyed our time there. Been back to visit a couple times since. Would probably have been back again if it hadn't been uh, for uh, for COVID and all these travel restrictions. But uh, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. COVID has gotten all of our way, <laughs> into all Indeed. of our ways. <laughs> um, so well, another question though, man. That the England questions are just mm-hmm. burning me up. Medieval. That's probably I guess I, I'm thinking of Wessex. There's a Netflix show. The Last Kingdom. The Last Kingdom, yeah. I'm thinking about it. So, but medieval was that is that too early? No. Right? Uh, so actually, that is uh, kind of right smack 
dab in the middle of what I do. Um, I actually specifically work on um, on early medieval England. Yeah. Um, so my book is about um, my book spans about uh, 900 to 1100 AD, and the Last Kingdom is set in the late 800s. Um, okay. So the Last Kingdom would be kind of right before what I do. Uh, you know, talking about uh, Alfred the Great and and all that. Alfred the Great died in 899, and my book uh, kind of starts around 900. So so yeah, right in there. Awesome, awesome. Well, we'll we'll, we'll save those questions for after after we <laughs> finish talking about Kentucky because right. that's what people are here for. So let's get into a little Carter County. It's the 88th County of Kentucky. Uh, it borders Lewis, Greenup, Boyd, Lawrence, Elliott, and Round County. It's kind of in the northeastern part of Kentucky. I would consider it eastern Kentucky. I mean, we're going to get into mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, sometimes people are a bit strict on their uh, boundaries of where eastern Kentucky is and this and that. Um, but I would think Carter County very much is eastern Kentucky. Um, right around in the, I guess it's considered in the Boyd Ashland area or mm-hmm. you know, all those physical or population data things that they do. Um, but it was formed in April 10th, 1838 from parts of Greenup and Lawrence County. Uh, it's named after William Grayson Carter, correct? That's correct. Now, do you have any, I don't, the paragraph that is in the Kentucky encyclopedia is not very forthcoming. Do you have more information about him specifically? I can tell you. I can tell you a bit. Um, so I know he was a state senator mm-hmm. um, in the uh, first half of the 1800s, um, and he also uh, the Carters had a residence um, in Carter County, so they had they had connections. Um, and if I recall correctly, this this I would have to uh, fact check myself, uh, but if I recall correctly. Um, the Carters were the recipients of a number of Revolutionary War land grants um, in the area. Uh, so obviously, uh, I don't Carter himself. I believe he was too young uh, to have served in the Revolutionary War, but I think his, I want to say his uncle, um, mm-hmm. served in the Revolutionary War. Um, some of his other relatives, um, you know. And we're talking if you if you know anything about Revolutionary War land grants, you know, we're talking about tens of thousands of acres in some cases. Yes, you know, large. In Mormons. Uh, yes. tracts of land, uh, which, uh, you know, they did cause they couldn't, they couldn't <laughs> afford to pay anybody. Uh, uh, but yeah, so, so there's a number of those in Carter County, you know, and then they sold them off. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this maybe a little bit more later, but, um, the Carters actually built, a they had a couple thousand acre plantation, um, there in, in Carter County, uh, eventually renamed. And there was uh, when we, we can talk about the civil war a little later, but there was actually a civil war skirmish. Okay. That. Um, yeah. at that residence that they uh, that they built right, right around um, 18 it was built right around 1830 so that actually would have been before the formation of the county so it still would have been um, either let's see either it probably would have been green up yeah. I'm guessing if it's because it's, it's near Grayson so it probably would have been green up mm-hmm. so here, here's what I got to add to that and we may be able to solve this mystery maybe not so William Grayson uh, the, he was the Revolutionary War General that Grayson County is named after. And the, mm-hmm. the, the land, some of the land for Carter County was, was the Revolutionary Grant that he received. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Grayson, which is in Carter County, I originally yes. thought it was named after him, but it's named after his family, which I believe is, his, is William Grayson Carter. So I, I'm thinking... Grayson, I found also that Grayson was named after William Grayson Carter's wife, who is H-E-B-E, Hebe, Hebe? How would you pronounce that? I think I've heard Hebe, though I'm Hebe. not certain of that. So, so Hebe Grayson Carter, which it says is the daughter of William Colonel William Grayson. Grayson. Hmm. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it does, the, 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 the timeline doesn't seem like it's right. I, it doesn't seem like it because it would also mean that they were related in a way, maybe. Yeah. So and, that, you know, and I'm not sure I'd have to do some digging on that to, yeah. uh, to, to untangle all those wires. Yeah. It, it's a bit, we need a genealogist, uh, which uh, Russ yeah. Carson, <laughs> Russ yeah, Carson I, is my, is my 
my uh, connected genealogist, I guess. But yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm a historian, not a genealogist. <laughs> yeah. I, the historical society sometimes gets all these in-depth genealogical questions, and I say I'm going to have to, yeah. I'm going to have to defer this because I, I, uh, I don't know who know, that you, is. You want me to read some medieval manuscripts, and I can help you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, untangling some of this stuff is beyond me. Yeah. So Grayson gets its name from Hebe Grayson Carter is what we're going to go with. Carter County gets its name from William Grayson Carter. The land comes from William Grayson, or some of the land, at least, I guess I, guess I should say. The relation between them and that, we'll let somebody else solve yeah. <laughs> for now. For now. Um, but it was one of those things that just kind of, I kind of got contradicting information. I didn't know for sure, and it, didn't really, it doesn't really add up, I guess, in my mind. And I probably mm. need to see one of those cool graphs that shows yeah, everything. That would be helpful. <laughs> That'll make a lot more sense. But Anyway, Carter County is named after William Grayson Carter, and we're here to talk about Carter County. So, so first settlers, do you have some good names, I guess, family names, first settlers of who was there first? Oh, before we even mention that, Native Americans of course, were there first. And I, I have not been able to find any specific tribes, anything like that. Are you aware of any? Plenty of Shawnee in that area really uh, that kind of uh, northeastern corner of Kentucky, uh, you know, all along the Ohio and in these areas, uh, there are Shawnee, there's others as well. Um, and I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in Native American history by any means, but much of the activity that I'm familiar with um, is, is Shawnee. And we have, there's a wealth of, of Indian um, material, of Native American material in Carter County. Um, for instance, Carter Cave State Park, um, there have been uh, a, a, a large number of, of finds there. Um, and in fact, um, there's only about five, I think only about five sites in um, Carter County that are on the National Register of Historic Places. And one of them is, uh, is actually, a, a, I guess for lack of a better word, as a classified site um, because it is an Indian uh, petroglyph. Oh, wow. Um, in the Olive Hill area, uh, the location is unknown. Uh, you know, I don't know where it is. Uh, nobody that I know knows where it is. I mean, someone must. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but because, you know, they're concerned about people defacing it or, or, or you know, some idiot going out there, you know. Digging, doing, looking for an arrowhead doing, or something. Yeah, doing what idiots do. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, so that is, um, I, I, I hope someday I could at least see a picture of it. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, that's on the National Register of Historic Places, um, somewhere in the Olive Hill area. But, uh, but uh, I, I'd say you probably could count the number of people who know maybe on two hands. Wow. That's, that's, that, that sounds like a, a great Carter County mystery that we need to, we need to get in touch with somebody and let, let like us go said, see I'd, it. I'd love to. <laughs> I, I'd, never, I'd never ask the location, but I'd love to see a photo. Yeah. 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 That is pretty cool. Um, so as we get, I guess, into you know, European descendants, uh, settlers from Virginia, you know, North Carolina, the, the typical people that came to Kentucky first, uh, who, who, do you, who are some of those first settlers? Well, you know, um, so one of the things I like to uh, start with, and I'll start with this very briefly, um, is when we think about white people in Kentucky, you know, we tend to think about people like Thomas Walker, right? Um, yeah. And others, though Thomas Walker certainly wasn't the first, um, you know, when we think of the English uh, settlers of English descent, you know, it's probably long hunters in, in the 1730s, 1740s. Um, but even before that, I suspect the first white people in Kentucky were probably Jesuits. Um, they're, they're probably, uh, you know, Jesuits uh, allied with various Indian tribes in the area, maybe as early as 1670s, you know, uh, perhaps even earlier, um, you know, a good uh, 70, 80 years before Dom, Dr. Thomas Walker. Now, I'm not saying there are Jesuits in Carter County necessarily. Um, I think, uh, but but I would, uh, I'd put money that they were in uh, uh, probably up around uh, Louisville, some maybe even, you know, the Maysville area. Anyway, I digress. Um, in, <laughs> well, it's very in, true. In, in, in Carter County, though, we know that there was exploration by whites down the Little Sandy, which must have gone through Carter County. Um, by, uh, I cannot, I can't tell you the exact name, but by people we know from travel journals, um, like William Kalk, 
Nicholas Cresswell. These are guys who are keeping journals in the uh, mid 1770s. Um, and they talk about um, coming down the Little Sandy, um, you know, and hunting bear and uh, seeing buffaloes, um, mm -hmm. seeing uh, signs of Indians and things like that. Um, I mean, and just describing a completely wild, completely wild area. Um, and um, what we what we see in Carter County, um, and some of the same is true for places in uh, some places in Lawrence County, in Lewis, um, essentially counties that are near the river, but aren't on the river. They're they're near the Ohio, but they aren't on the Ohio. Um, now the, that doesn't mean the Ohio is inaccessible to them because we have Tigers Creek, for instance. We have the Little Sandy. If you go further south, you've got the Big Sandy. That you know, all these, of course, they feed into the Ohio. Um, but these places that are inland from the river, they are not settled in that first wave of settlement that comes through the Cumberland Gap, right? Daniel Boone and all that. Yeah. Um, you know. Carter County, uh, I won't say Carter County doesn't have anything to do with Daniel Boone. Um, <laughs> and I won't say that there's no white people in Carter County when Daniel Boone is coming through the Cumberland Gap, um, because we just don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, if uh, but if there were, there were very, very few of them. Um, and they probably would find themselves in a precarious position. Um, <laughs> I'd say, uh, you know, any any white person in Carter County in the 1770s or 1780s, I'd say you'd want to <laughs> you'd be very careful. <laughs> Get out quicker. <laughs> um, and but what what happens um, in in the uh, right around Kentucky statehood and then into the early 1800s is you start to have people um, moving into these areas. Um, you know, sometimes it's in the case this happened in Carter County, where you have um, these war land grants that are being broken up and, and parceled out. Um, in some cases, you have small farmers who did get their Revolutionary War grant, and then they actually moved there themselves. Uh, one of the older families um, that's in the Olive Hill area, um, but uh, close to Olive Hill, close to um, uh, Carter Cave State Park, uh, very old family in the area, the Plumbers, P-L-U-M-M-E-R. And if I recall correctly, they are the, they are the beneficiaries of a, of a war grant. Um, some of the other old families that are in the area, um, uh, names like Skaggs, S-K-A-G-G-S. Um, yeah. Another old one is Gobel, G-O-E-B-E-L. You, know, you, you may not know this, but uh, you know William Gobel was the Kentucky governor who was shot. Yeah. Course, yeah. Um, I, I, I doubt they would be connected, but they would probably have some sort of German lineage connection at mm -hmm. some point. Uh, because yeah, they, they may they, they may intersect somewhere in there, though I, I don't know of any direct relation. Mm -hmm. that, that's really, I've not, I've not heard the last name Goebel for anybody except for him, especially in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty cool that there's that, that connection as well. But go ahead. Yeah, so, so there may be some connection there, though mm -hmm. not. Not one I'm aware of, but uh, we'd have to consult a genealogist on again. That one. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, so um, once you start getting to the 18 teens, the 1820s, that's when we really start to see um, these places off the river, inland from the river, mm -hmm. um, in the Appalachian Mountains, start to be settled in a, in a serious way, um, where we start to see some industrial exploitation of these areas as well. So for instance, one of the first um, industries that we know of, probably the first industry that we know of in Carter County is a salt works, where they are taking advantage of salt wells in the Little Sandy River, boiling that down um, and, and selling the, the products of that. Um, and in fact, I've seen some of those cauldrons that were used for boiling down that salt. Wow, um, that, that's, that's, really, that's really neat. That's, and that's one thing that I, when I went doing my uh, research you know salt was kind of the first first industry like you said um but ha having those or those specific to carter county the one the ones that you said you have saw are those oh. are those specific to carter wow that's really cool yeah. i've seen i've seen ones from from other areas as well um and boy they're they're big um you know <laughs> uh you know imagine uh, you know twice the size of a large exercise ball and you've kind of got the the wow. scale. I mean, yeah. you know, and, they're, and they're producing salt on an industrial scale, you know, 
Um, and so that's a lot. Uh, and you imagine the, the fire that would have, that would have heated that cauldron would be <laughs> yeah. large. Now, and I assume um, too, they would, they would load it up, sell down the river to sell it or you know, sell it. Yeah. You know, they're probably using, um, uh, uh, flat boats, you yeah. know, um, up and down the, uh, the little Sandy and maybe, um, in the Western part of the County. Of course, at this time there was no Carter County, but uh, a little bit later there would be, um, but those, I think those salt works were there. I want to say they start disappearing from maps in the late 1800s. Um, and so I think some of them were in operation probably, you know, 1870s, 1880s. Um, and so, so well into when Carter County um, was, uh, was its own entity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, Tigers Creek, um, Little Sandy, I'd say, you know, you go back 150 years and you'd see plenty of flat boats uh, going <laughs> up and down. Uh, you know, you'd imagine a time when the roads were, poor or non-existent yeah um, that'd be but, a good way to uh to get from point a to point b well yeah i mean go and you think going down the river that's their that's their job i'm gonna sail down the river with this salt to sell it and then mm -hmm. I yeah guess, you know you hike go on to, the way back you go to uh in, in the you know in our area uh, you go to pogue's landing uh now called ashland um portsmouth um south shore kentucky um, if you want to go further up the river, you go to Maysville or, um, or as they used to say, the great falls of the Ohio, uh, <laughs> Louisville. Yeah, yeah. And then on from there to, to new Orleans. There you go. Yeah. That, that rivers, man, they were the highway. Um, Indeed. so also with, um, so salt Peter though, they also mined that in 1812. That was that, um, Oftentimes, so in Rock Castle County, there's the Salt Peter Cave, uh, which was which is uh, you can go there now. Uh, a lot of caves, or just uh, what, I mean, I assume they got it from caves, correct? Oh yeah, we're uh, one of the uh, northeastern Kentucky. Um, you know, of course, Kentucky in general is cave rich, yes. uh, but northeastern Kentucky in particular um, is uh, uh, is is very. Uh, we we have a we have a wealth of caves. Um, the uh, of course we have Carter Cave State Park um, here, and uh, I actually I worked as a cave guide there for cool. a couple of years. Oh. Um, spent a spent a lot of time in Saltpeter Cave. Have some uh, have some ghost stories there. In fact, oh, uh, which uh, I'm I'm not much of a ghost guy, but let me tell you, there, I saw some creepy things in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I really am not much for ghost stories, but some some that that cave uh, is. Uh, you know, if, if that's the kind of thing you're into, I recommend visiting Salt Peter Cave. <laughs> um, but of course, fascinating history there as well. Um, you know, essentially the the uh, the British um, and some other European countries, you know, cutting the U.S. off from imports of, of uh, gunpowder, um, and so had to had to make our own. And gunpowder isn't complicated; it's not complicated to make, but it is laborious. Uh, <laughs> And it's uh, certainly dirty work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, um, Carter Cave State Park has that um, has that cave preserved. Um, and uh, you can, uh, I, 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 as far as I know, they haven't done any there. But I'd love to see some archaeology done in that cave and see what they'd come up with. I think it'd be fascinating. Oh yeah. Now, now, so you know, I've been to the Mammoth Cave plenty of times, and, and Great Salt Peter Cave and Rock Castle, of course. Um, I don't know, man. The cave-in is not, I, I don't think it's for me, especially if you had to get in that little bitty hole, you know, I think the claustrophobia would definitely get to me. As, yeah, I've, uh, fortunately, I never, uh, when I was young, I had a little claustrophobia, but uh, uh, I think I had all that beaten out of me um, <laughs> by, uh, uh, in, in Boy Scouts and eventually working as a cave guy. And I, I like, I, I enjoy the crawling. And actually, yeah. Salt Peter is a, is a great cave to crawl in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh yeah a lot of uh, a lot of good passages in there um so to listeners i i, I recommend it yeah yeah I, I do not invite me though i probably will not <laughs> i will not go into the, any well, of the small you narrows can, uh, <laughs> you can just you can just take the walking tour <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um so some iron furnaces i i was able to find the iron furnaces in um carter can I have five iron furnaces um, yeah so i'd I'd probably call that the, uh, I'd say that's probably the second industry in Carter mm -hmm. County. Um, you know, uh, someone, someone may uh, hop on here and, and uh, you know, 
say, oh, he's wrong, you know, this and that. <laughs> um, but certainly iron, um, you know, much of Kentucky, you know, iron rich, um, iron rich soils, iron rich um, hills, etc. cetera. Um, and so, you know, these furnaces mostly producing pig iron, um, you know, lower quality iron, um, that's going to be, um, it, it, pig iron can be, has, has some uses, but in general is sent off to be refined further, um, you know, elsewhere where they had better furnaces yeah. uh, to, to the best of my knowledge. Now, when you say pig iron, is that just a term for lower grade iron or is yes, there actually like, yeah. okay. So there's no pig involved at all. No <laughs> pigs involved. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Pig iron, pig iron, essentially, uh, yeah. Lower grade, lower purity, um, uh, iron, which probably actually has its similarities to uh, to a lot of the iron that would have been made, you know, in the in the Middle Ages um, and in the early modern period before you have um, modern uh, uh, modern uh, smelting techniques, modern purification techniques like uh, uh, like puddling. Uh, that's one of the uh, techniques that's come up with late 1700s, early 1800s that uh, that help them make much higher quality iron but uh you know that's not going to be happening in the backwoods uh backwoods of kentucky you know in the 1830s or so yeah they're, 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 they're gonna be doing what they can do to to get it made and <laughs> yeah and you, you man you imagine shipping you know iron ingots you know weighing yeah. lord knows how much um and then shipping those in a flat boat up to you know portsmouth or maysville or whatever yeah talk about hard work <laughs> yeah they, they were they were making and then you know uh, they get to the end of the journey and then they sell the wood on their flat uh, flat boat and walk back walk back home or, or or maybe get a horse or whatever they do who knows um yeah not an easy life no definitely not um so i, I mean that's pretty good any any events right off uh, right off the top of your head you can think about that were kind of significant say from foundation well i think grayson was incorporated in 1844 um mm -hmm. and that's that like we said before that's the county seat and i'm double checking 80 so it was a few years what was it grayson was the county seat right was yep. it moved mm -hmm. okay um uh, some places like ha the county seats are moved after you know, so long or however long it may be um and, and for many reasons but i was just double checking there um so let's Civil War, big things happening in the Civil War? Yeah, so um, with regard to the Civil War, you know, uh, when people think of the Civil War in Kentucky, people aren't thinking, oh yeah, Northeastern Kentucky, what's going on there? Uh, you know, you think of Western Kentucky, uh, yeah. you know, the Gorillas. campaign of, uh, you know, Ulysses S. Grant um, and others. You think of the campaigns in Central Kentucky, so it yep. wouldn't be, you know, right, probably right in where you are. Yeah, Battle of Richmond, Perryville, those places. Yeah, uh, Mill Springs and all that, um, all that good stuff. Um, so Central and Western Kentucky, um, you know, there's there's a lot there, but Northeastern Kentucky kind of gets um, kind of gets left out of the of the of the Civil War stuff, and there's there's um, there's some good reasons for that, and then there's some not so good reasons for that. Um, uh, and, and this isn't necessarily some, of course, I'll talk about some things specific to Carter County, but that, you know, that trend is largely true for, you know, all of the Northeast. So the number one reason for that, and this is a legitimate reason, is that Northeastern Kentucky was staunchly Union. Uh, you know, you go to the Southeastern Kentucky, the Pikeville area, and that is not true. Um, even you go down to some areas, you know, in Lawrence County um, and, and south of there. That's far less true, but in a place like Carter County or, um, you know, uh, what's now Boyd or, or Lewis, these areas staunchly, yes. um, you know, probably, I, I think, you know, 75% would be conservative number. Yeah. Um, and so you just don't have the kind of, um, you know, kind of brother against brother conflict that the civil war is known for. You mm -hmm. just don't have it, um, on the scale that you do elsewhere. In northeastern Kentucky. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Um, the uh, a couple of things I'll mention. Um, first of all, quite famously, is that John Hunt Morgan um, raids Olive Hill um, during the uh, during the Civil War, and I think there is 
um, I'm not an expert on Morgan's raid, uh, but if I recall correctly, there is some resistance, but just, I mean, uh, you know, you, you think about home guard versus cavalry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's probably not going to go good. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, and, and, you know, and they're also, you know, they're raiding, they're burning, they're moving quickly. Uh, they're usually not uh, sticking around. And there's actually a bed and breakfast, uh, if I recall. Uh, last I knew it was an operation. Uh, um, John Hunt Morgan bed and breakfast and all of that. <laughs> um, That's in Olive Hill? Uh, I don't yeah. know if the house, uh, the house that it's in may be period. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to double check on that. Certainly, it certainly looks um, old, though. I, I don't know if it's Civil War era. It, it may be. Um, but yeah, so John Hunt Morgan raids Olive Hill um during the civil war so uh, he comes through there and olive hill um uh at some point is probably actually more prosperous than grayson um but um uh you know and that that <laughs> may be one reason it attracted the attention of, <laughs> yeah. of john morgan um they also had um uh, I don't, I don't think as early as the Civil War, but later Olive Hill would have uh, actually better railroad connections uh, than Grayson would. Uh, they were connected uh, both the EK Railroad, Eastern Kentucky Railroad, as well as the uh, C&O, Chesapeake and Ohio. Hmm. Uh, uh, but in any case, so that's one of the major goings on in Carter County during the Civil War. Um, one of the others that is much less well known, but very interesting. Uh, this happens on the Eastern side of the county. Um, probably about a mile, mile and a half outside what was Grayson at the time. But Grayson's much larger now than it was. Um, I believe it's 1862. Uh, this, this actually brings us back to the Carters. So the Carters had built this plantation house um, in, uh, on, on the outskirts of Grayson, a couple thousand acres, you know. Um, and there were slaves there. Uh, we know from the from census data that there were uh, slaves there all the way up until 1860, until um, you know after the uh, emancipation of slaves. And of course, the uh, uh, emancipation proclamation though didn't apply to it. Only applied to the states. Yeah, Virginia. it did not. Yeah, it did not apply, it did not apply to, to Kentucky. Yeah, that took a constitutional amendment. Um, and so uh, those slaves are there in the 1860 census, but of course not in the 1870 census. Um, but uh, there was, I believe, the uh, the Carters, the man who had it built, which may actually have been uh, William Grayson Carter himself, he died. Um, and his wife didn't want to live in Carter County basically by herself, which was, you know, pretty rural. And I, if I recall, she moved back to Lexington and she sold the plantation on to a guy named Lansdowne. Um, his name was A.J. Lansdowne, Andrew Jackson Lansdowne. Um, very interesting character, uh, medical doctor, um, and um, classmate of Jefferson Davis. Whoa! Um, <laughs> both he and Jeff—I mean, he and Jefferson Davis would have known each other. Um, they attended Transylvania at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he also, um, uh. Is from what I gather, he also knew Henry Clay. There's some suggestion, I'd have to track down the letter, the specific letter, but there's some suggestion that Henry Clay may have actually visited this plantation yeah. at some point. Um, he, um, again, I'd have to track down the citation, but if I recall, he alludes to it. He doesn't come out and say, I stayed the night, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but he alludes to visiting um, uh, Lansdowne there. Um, and so, so yeah, this guy lands down is a, you know, he's a kind of a bit of a mover and a shaker. Mm -hmm. um, and anyway, so he purchases this plantation from uh, from the Carters um, and lives there for uh, essentially for the remainder of his life. Um, and he, unlike most of the residents of Carter County, is a Confederate sympathizer. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. And so, the closest place for Confederates to join up um, is Louisa in Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. And that is, as they would say, a fur piece um, from Carter County. And so you have some of these guys who are coming down from places like Greenup and Lewis, and maybe even some from Ohio who are crossing the river and coming down. 
and Lansdowne is um, his his house is a way station uh, that is funneling troops to Louisa to join up. Oh, the army. wow! Yeah, and as you can imagine, the Carter County militia when they find out about this, they are um, not pleased by any means. Um, and so they send out, the, you know, the base, they go out to his house um, and they are armed, they surround the house, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, a, a short skirmish ensues. Um, and uh, some of the rebels escape. Um, I think there may be some wounded. Um, there are women and children in the house, in fact, and uh, they talk about running down the hill towards the little Sandy River, you know, about having bullet holes in their clothes and things like this. Uh -huh. um, in fact, one of the girls who was a staunch Confederate sympathizer for the rest of her life, she was a child at the time, and um, she, let's just say she had strong words later in life to say about <laughs> Yankees. Um, <laughs> Uh, because she'd been shot at by them uh, yeah. while fleeing her home. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, typically called the skirmish at Lansdowne Hall, and it was reported in the New York Times in 1862. Oh, oh wow, that's pretty interesting. So, Ed, yeah. so it, it made the news, um, <laughs> you know, uh, in, even in New York. Um, the other uh, significant thing I'll mention, there's, there's, of course, there's so, you know, so much one can mention in Civil War. Um, is that there is actually a, one of the uh, Kentucky Infantry Regiments is organized in Carter County, in Grayson. The 40th Kentucky Volunteer Infantry uh, was mustered in at Grayson um, not too long after Gettysburg and Vicksburg. Uh, I think it's set in September of 1863, so um, yeah, fresh off that. The, um, I think the 40th Kentucky, they, so they did see action on a number of occasions, um, mostly small to medium size engagements in Kentucky and Virginia. Um, you know, they, uh, they weren't at any of the really, uh, as far as I'm aware, they weren't at any of the really nasty, um, you know, they massive won. engagements. Yeah. Of, of, and they were mustered out, I think at the end of 1864. Um, you know, so they weren't at the wilderness, they weren't at Petersburg, um, you know, uh, those kind of places that you really did not <laughs> if you were a Civil War soldier, um, they were, um, they did serve, suffer a fair amount of casualties, but like a lot of Civil War regiments, the, the majority of those casualties were from disease, um, mm -hmm. not from, uh, th there were some that were killed in action, but far more, far more uh, succumbed to disease than to, uh, you know, bullet wounds. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, that's, that's very, it's very interesting because, and who you, you do just you just hear about Perryville, uh, Rich Battle of Richmond, uh, Mill Springs, uh, you know the guerrillas out in the West. You may you know th those things, but you it's often overlooked uh, the stuff happening in Eastern Kentucky because it's not the first time I uh, had J.R. Van Hoos on a few episodes before this. And guess what? In Johnson County, you know, in Eastern Kentucky, there were skirmishes and and, and these little. <laughs> battles that popped up all all over the place really when you when you start mapping them out and thinking about them yeah um, but the whole the whole funneling funneling rebels through your uh, through the plantation that's that's pretty uh that's pretty interesting that that might need I, to be i like to think of it as a reverse underground railroad yeah <laughs> yeah that's what that's what i was like the going. complete opposite of the underground <laughs> railroad funneling funneling rebels down from the ohio river area Maybe yeah. even from Ohio itself um, to the south to to fight against the Union. Yeah, pretty crazy, pretty crazy scenario there. We'd like to thank Dr. Dyson for joining us and talking to us about Carter County history. We're going to stop our conversation right here and pick it back up next week. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.